Welcome back to Wired and Active. With us in, a, in the studio today is someone who knows jihad inside out. Whether it is the jihad with the prefix E or the jihad without this prefix, he's the man who knows it all. A former Lieutenant General, the former Governor of Sindh and the former Interior Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Muinuddin Heder. Assalamu alaikum sir. Wa alaikum salam. How are you? Thank you very much. Sir, uh, first of all, uh, let's uh, make it clear to our audiences that there is a difference between online terrorism and online jihad. Can you please uh, clear this? Yes. No, jihad means uh, trying for something, defending something. So every faith has this component built in. Uh, they like to, uh, you know, preserve the basic entity of their religion or of their ideology, for example, communism, to protect itself, it would go out to war to protect communism. Same capitalism is doing. They go and wage war in Vietnam and they lose their people. In Islam, jihad, I think, is by and large very well defined. And there are very strict preconditions when you can undertake jihad. First of all, it is the state which can declare jihad, the amir e -Wakht. And secondly, the preconditions are so strict that there has to be a good reasonable chance to bring something better after the jihad has taken place. Or there are good chances to win. But you know, if small groups spring up in, in length and breadth of a country, and each group starts amassing weapons, recruiting people, and in their own understanding of Islam in a limited way, which is uh, a sort of jihad, uh, uh, naming it a jihad, it will lead to anarchy. So um, now coming to the point that uh, all these jihadi groups which are related to Muslims or uh, Christians or Jews or, or Jews, Hindus yes, or whatever yes, religion yes, they might be, yes. they have their online presence. Yes. So what sort of online presence do these jihadi groups have and what are their activities online? You see, uh, the point of view of uh, some larger political religious parties and some jihadi groups, they mention about Palestine, they mention about Kashmir, or uh, atrocities taking place in Chechnya, and they say that the capitalist world is against Islam and they're not do giving us a fair deal. Then this uh, attack on Iraq and Afghanistan, they highlight saying that this they have killed hundreds of thousands of thousands Muslims of people, yes. and uh, this is possible to please Israel and to break up the strength of the uh, you know strong countries around Israel like Iran, now they are threatening. Mm. So this is their second propaganda and they say we have to stand up. They say that we have to first of all make ourselves strong for which we need money and uh, your zakat and your frat and your donations, if you give it to us, uh, then we can use it to improve the lot of poor Muslims. Mm -hmm. Then they say that we need volunteers also. Those people who have studied in madrasas and who are imbued with the spirit of Islam to serve their poor brethren, we would like them to spare their time and come to us. So they don't say that you'll be given military training or that you'll be made to fight, but they, because otherwise, you know, it is illegal. So this in the, in, in the garb of doing some welfare work, they attract, uh, uh, I mean, money as well as people. So um, do these jihadi groups face problems when they are propagating their ideas online? You know, many of such ideas which are not actually Islamic, but they are it is their limited understanding of Islam. But what sort we of would, problems we would like, do these people we face? Would, we, would like, we would like, for example, these sites to be closed because anybody who is, you know, propagating something which is not quite Islamic and which is a sort of illiterate sort of uh, presentation of their ideas. But you'll be surprised that most of these sites which our jihadis and our other groups are using are all opened in the United States. None is opened in Pakistan. And when we approach America that we want the jihadi sites which are using, we want these to be closed down because they can be used also for terrorism. They so no for the freedom of speech, we don't want to close them down. So then we get suspicious that uh, why they're, they're allowing these. Because if illiterate people start, you know, interpreting Islam and giving their ideas, uh, in, the, in the eyes of the West, we will be taken as illiterate people that we are propagating ideas, we are totally out of date. And they say these people are really illiterate. I mean, they are a danger to the world peace. So, but they don't close such sites. So what is Pakistan's take on that? This site is not registered in Pakistan, not based in Pakistan, so we can't close it. So how does the Pakistani government keep a check on these websites? <coughs> Do they monitor these websites constantly? Yes. 
I think uh, our intelligence agencies do that plus FIA, Federal Investigation Agency. There is a department of cyber crimes and all the electronic media. Uh, they also see such sites in the intelligence bureau also, uh, especially of, uh, you know, sectarian and other such websites are all monitored and, uh, and uh, try to decipher what message they are giving. Most of these uh, jihadi parties like uh, the famous one Lashkar Tayyaba, which is in a discussion between India, Pakistan, mm -hmm. and Mumbai attacks, they have first of all an umbrella organization like uh, Al Dawa, and their aim and mission will be to you know banish poverty and to educate the young people and to feed the orphans, etc., etc. For that they will ask funds, and at the same time, uh, many other people like Sipai Sahaba. It is the umbrella organization, and there are MNAs and MPAs elected from Sipai Sabha, but they have a militant wing called Lashkar Jhangvi, although they disclaim, they say that we have no connection with that. But I mean, they propose noble causes, causes to help poor people, but with that money, some of, some of that money is diverted uh, towards buying weapons or training people. Uh, this is happening. And I think government is keeping a track of it, but government policy, I think, over the years has not been very strong enough. We have, you know, in the past let these groups grow for various reasons for jihad in Afghanistan. And subsequently, we did not tackle with the matter, and it has now go grown out of proportion. And today, the army is involved to uh, bring and to neutralize these groups in Sabat and in Fata and other places. But we should reply these sites logically by a group of intellectuals, by a group of Islamic scholars that what is true Islam and what you are saying about women education is not correct, what you are saying about this is not correct, so that other people get educated. So best way is not to close them down, allow them to say what they want to say, but with logic, I mean counter them. So I am quite sure people, those with reason, will see the difference between truth and falsehood and go on the right path and things will start changing. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. So this was Mr. Moinuddin Heather and in his words, education is the key. It's time for a very short break now, but when we come back, we'll talk to international experts about how e-jihad is spreading worldwide. <laughs>